Hey there, welcome. Welcome to spring cleaning from the inside out. Um, we don't have anybody logged in in person yet for our Zoom class, but that's okay if you're catching the replay, then welcome. My name is Nina Sassina, and I'm just gonna introduce myself and a little bit of my background. I wanna make sure you know who I am and who I'm not. Um, I am a certified aroma coach. I'm a licensed spiritual healer. I'm a certified drop technique specialist. I'm a teacher. I'm a pastor. I wear hats. <laughs> I make sure you know I'm not a doctor or a nurse. So I'm not going to be diagnosing anybody or prescribing anything today. Our class is for informational purposes only. And I'll be sharing a lot of my personal experiences because I come at these kind of topics um, on the other side of autoimmune disease. 20 some years ago, I was diagnosed with autoimmune ITP and it was a long road back to gain my health back. And I've been in full remission for 17 years, but that really set me on the path to natural wellness and wanting to know all of the natural and holistic ways that I could support my health. Um, because when I was sick, I took a lot of medications. I could say Western medicine almost, almost did me in. Um, but I'm healthy today because I took matters into my own hands and I started doing some alternative things to help my health. Um, I've got some resources that I used for our class. Again, I'm going to be sharing some personal experiences, but some of the cleanses that we're going to be talking about are from the inner transformations um, of using essential oils book by Dr. Leanne Deardiff. And a book called Road to Re Road to Wellness by Deborah Rayburn. I always like to cite my sources. Those are great resources. Um, if you enjoy our class and you want to know more, those would be great resources for you to dig a little bit deeper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and screen share. I've got a presentation and we can go through the slides. Feel free to screenshot, take notes, come back and watch the replay again. Um, if anything is helpful. And of course, I am 100% available to anybody that might have questions. Um, once this goes up for replay and it's on YouTube and all of that, you can click down into that little info section and I'll have my contact information on there if you would like to keep in touch. There we go, spring cleaning from the inside out. So the purpose of cleansing, like why would we even think about wanting to cleanse anyway? I've heard some people say it's kind of like giving your tune up, like changing the air filter in your car, right? We know, if we know a little bit about how our body works and how our liver and how our organs work, we know that our body is designed to clean itself. And so sometimes we err on the side of, well, our body does that automatically anyway. I don't need to cleanse my liver. I shouldn't need to cleanse my colon. But the truth is sometimes our body does get clogged with toxins. Your liver can get overloaded and end up being a bit sluggish. Um, and then we might want to do a cleanse, you know, to kind of clear things out and reset everything so it can keep functioning the way it's supposed to. Our bodies were designed to cleanse themselves. However, when we get overloaded with toxins, we may need extra help. What kind of toxins, right? If we're talking about toxins, where might these toxins be coming from? The standard American diet, unfortunately, right? We can abbreviate that and call it SAD. When we talk about standard American diet, right? Processed food, fast food, um, things in boxes, things in packages, things of convenience, those things that we get used to eating all the time, unfortunately, they have a lot of preservatives. They have a lot of things in them that end up harming our health. Also, harsh chemicals from cleaning and personal care products, including artificial fragrances. There's a lot of toxic chemicals in the things we clean our kitchen with and the things we clean our bathroom with, including lotions and soaps and shampoos and all those things we put on the skin, all of those perfumes, all of those things that have artificial fragrance are kind of like this little bundle host 
of chemicals that end up getting inside our body. Because even if we're putting it on our skin and we can say, well, the skin is a great barrier. Yes, but your skin lets through about 60% of what you put on it, which means that those toxins are getting into your body. They will hang out in your cells, in your liver for how long? Sometimes a very, very long time. And heavy metals. Um, heavy metals can get into our body. And again, they can get lodged in different cellular tissues. And when we're talking about heavy metals, there's a lot of things that we put in our body, right? Shots that we put in our arm have heavy metal preservatives in them. If we read ingredients in those things, we see the word thimerosal. And I encourage you, I, I'm not anti anything, but I am pro knowing what you're putting in your body. You can read the ingredients. You can read those package inserts, even by just um, Googling and looking it up online with pharmaceutical companies. You can know if a shot or an IV medication has thimerosal, which means mercury, or aluminum as a preservative. And just with my history with autoimmune disease, a few years ago, like in more recent years, I started Googling the medications, the IV medications that I took as some of my friends, and I was flabbergasted to, you know, to use that word, um, at what was in the IVs that they put in me, aluminum as a preservative, thimerosal. And I didn't realize that all of that was going in me. And so I have taken time to do some cleansing and I've had some interesting cleansing experiences because of that, that I will share as we go along. So who should cleanse? Honestly, if that little list of toxins concerned you and you went, oh my gosh, you know, maybe I have spent too many years with the standard American diet. Maybe I have, you know, been using harsh chemicals in my home. Maybe I have, you know, used some things with heavy metals in them. You know, if, if you're checking the boxes on that, you might want to consider doing a cleanse. But who else? Anyone who wants to release toxins. Anyone who wants to support their immune system, 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your digestive tract. So if your immune system is a focus for you, then doing a cleanse and cleansing out your digestive system might be really helpful. Anyone who's struggling with a chronic illness or digestive issues, anyone struggling with allergies. The Inner Transformations book gave this fact and she said as much as 90% of allergies can clear up with a colon and liver cleanse. That's, that's huge, that's astounding. Anyone who is not having multiple bowel movements a day. Now I know that going to the bathroom is one of those things we're not always comfortable talking about, but the truth is, we should be going to the bathroom and having bowel movements multiple times a day, at least two to three, or, or as many times as we eat meals, right? When we eat a meal, it needs to circulate through our digestive system and make its way out. And if it doesn't, that means the toxins that are supposed to release, they're getting stuck in there somewhere. They're getting stuck in our colon. Heard people say, well, it's normal for me to only go once every few days, or I go maybe once a week. Now that might seem normal for you, but it's not healthy. Typical, just because that's what your body, that's what's happening in your body, doesn't mean that's what's healthy for you. That means that those toxins that your body wants to get rid of, that your body needs to get rid of, that means they're being held up somewhere. And toxins in your body will either sooner or later, those toxins will make you sick. We can also cleanse emotional toxins as well as physical toxins. So when we're talking about physical toxins, right? Those things get stuck in our cells, they get stuck in our tissue, they get stuck in our liver. Our emotions do that also. And we know that our 
physical body reacts to emotions, right? We know how we feel when we get nervous or our heart starts to beat a little bit too fast. We know how we feel when we get stressed. And so those emotions, even especially the negative ones, right? Our body holds on to those so much so that we can actually have a physical manifestation of an emotional issue. Now we could make a whole other class just out of, you know, how our, how our physical body reacts to emotions. But the point is when those negative emotions get stuck in our body, we, they can make us sick and we can clear them by doing different kinds of cleansing. High levels of stress tax our organs. Our organs hold on to our negative emotions and dip organs hold on to different emotions. So fear and worry gets housed in our kidneys. Anger, rage, and unforgiveness get held in your liver and gallbladder. Inner crying or deep grief gets held in the lungs or the kidneys. Sadness or what we would call a loss of sweets gets held in the pancreas. A lack of joy gets held in the heart. And revenge can actually cause kidney stones. So we can look at this from either side of the coin. We could look at it from the emotional side and say, if I'm struggling with some of these emotions, I might want to work on a cleanse for that organ. Or we could look at it on the other side and say, I'm going to be working on cleansing some of these organs. I'm going to see if some of the emotional stuff that I'm struggling with might clear up and help me feel better about some things. It kind of, it kind of works hand in hand, right? And stress can get held in the stomach or other systems, including the immune system. We can also cleanse by the seasons. And, you know, this is kind of like a Chinese medicine sort of idea that our body goes in cycles, different organs and different body systems are associated with different seasons of the year. And also, too, when we think about um, food that's in season, like fresh produce. So in the spring is a good time to cleanse the liver and gallbladder. And, you know, we could dig deeper into this. The Inner Transformation book really explains because all of the different foods that are seasonal for spring are the foods that um, coincidentally cleanse the liver and gallbladder. In summer, it's a good time to cleanse the heart and small intestine in the early summer and the spleen, lymph, and stomach in the late summer. The fall is a good to cleanse the colon and the lung. Now, there is a connection between these. I'm going to come back to that. And the winter is a good to cleanse the kidneys. So if we were just looking at the year as a scope and we went, okay, you know, I'm going to start, you know, cleanse each thing per season. But now our asterisk on the other side of the screen down there, don't wait for a certain season if your body needs to cleanse. So right now it's, you know, we're transitioning from winter to spring. But if I really feel like my colon needs a cleanse, you know, that that's, I'm not going to the bathroom or I've got, you know, my body is signaling me that that's what I really need. Don't wait until fall. Don't put it off. You can go ahead and cleanse. So this is just kind of like a rule of thumb, but don't ever put off a cleanse if you think your body needs it. Now, the connection between the colon and the lungs. Now we know that physiologically, our lungs don't connect to our colon physically, but body system wise, there's this connection with the way mucus gets stored. So that if you're struggling with lung issues, you know, with a lot of mucus or my husband struggles with asthma, if you cleanse the colon and you do like a mucus cleanse, the lungs will clear up. And I saw that happen. I know that might even sound a little bit strange until you actually see it happen. My husband did a cleanse. Later on, we're going to talk about the master cleanse. And we did a master cleanse and, you know, because mucus and asthma was something my husband struggled with. 
And when you do the master cleanse, you completely clear out the colon. And lo and behold, his body released so much mucus that his lungs cleared up, his asthma got better, he stopped snoring at night because he didn't have all of this congestion stuff going on. So there's definitely a hand in hand in that. If you clear one, you'll clear the other. So where do we begin? You might even be thinking, well, okay, maybe I need to cleanse. What should I even start with? There's a rule of thumb. We always start with the colon because we don't want to block the exit. Okay, you can take a second to laugh about that. Like we said, if we're not maybe going to the bathroom normally or enough, and we start with, let's say, a liver cleanse or a parasite cleanse, and our body starts to release all of the toxins, we need to make sure that those toxins can exit the building so that our body doesn't hold on to them. So you never want to start any other kind of cleanse unless you know either, you know, I know my colon is working or if I'm not sure, or maybe it's sluggish, it's possible to have a sluggish colon. We always start with a colon cleanse. Another fact nobody really wants to talk about is the fact that most people carry around at least seven pounds of impacted fecal matter in their colons. When we do a colon cleanse, our body starts to release lots of stuff that maybe it's been there a long time. Good colon function is two to three bowel movements per day that are fast and easy to pass. So again, if we're struggling, or we're sitting in the bathroom for a really long time to have those bowel movements, that's not ideal. And we want to consider helping our body cleanse all of that. When we're doing a cleanse, that's our goal. So let's say, you know, maybe I'm not going normally and I set out to do a colon cleanse. What's my goal? How do I know if my colon cleanse is working? Two to three movements a day fast and easy to pass, not too watery, not too hard. Again, <laughs> things we don't normally talk about on a, you know, on a Zoom class. A lot of toxins are released while cleansing that upon entering the bloodstream or liver make you feel nauseous, headachy, weak, or sick. And that's a quote from the book. And the reason for that is it's the reaction to the toxins being released. So word of caution, and this isn't a bad caution, it's just one of those things to know. When you start to do a cleanse, because this has happened to me personally, you start to do a cleanse, whether that's a colon cleanse or a liver cleanse or a parasite cleanse, when your body starts to let go of those toxins before they make their way out, you've got toxins moving around in your bloodstream and you might start to feel yucky. You might start to feel like a headache or even like sinusy, like you've got a head cold, or you might feel kind of like flu-ish flu symptoms, right? Like achy, yucky, fevery, weak, whatever, nauseous. And you might even think like, oh my gosh, this cleanse is making me feel worse. Don't stop. It's actually a good thing. You, It's the toxins that you're feeling. Stick with it. And let those, let those toxins get out. Don't stop your cleanse if and when this happens. And this, ha this has happened to me multiple times. Um, there's a reason for that. Um, but you can flush with extra water and just, you know, keep flushing, keep, keep doing your cleanse. And I, and the reason why this has happened to me um, multiple times is because, like I said, when I was using a lot of medications, when I was struggling with autoimmune disease. I took a lot of steroids, a lot of chemotherapy, a lot of medications that had heavy metal toxins. I had no idea how toxic my body was, how toxic my liver was. So when I would do cleanses, my body would detox really hard and I would start to have all of these weird reactions. And it was just that reminder to me, like, oh my gosh, I had no idea how much toxins were in my body. 
And maybe, you know, during certain cleanses, I just needed to back off a little bit. You know, if it was something with a supplement, I would take a little bit less, flush with a lot of water, and then just go a little bit more gentle on my system. Um, I'm actually, there's a liver and colon cleanse protocol that I'm using right now, but again, I'll share when we get to that slide. Um, but it's a really gentle cleanse. And I think I have cleansed a lot of stuff out of my body. Um, so that now I'm not having a detox reaction like I used to. But if you just kind of maybe even reflect a little bit on your personal health and maybe what your body's been through or what your liver's been through, you might go, well, you know, I've been through a lot. My liver and I have been through a lot together. I think maybe we should do a cleanse. A well-balanced colon cleanse will have herbs that break up mucus, release the caked on lining from the bowel, absorb the toxins so they don't get into the bloodstream, stimulate peristaltic action and add bulk to help move the intestinal contents through the system. Now there is a colon cleanse protocol that I'm gonna share with you later on that does all of these things. So when we think about, if we think about the liver and all of the things that the liver is responsible for doing, we're gonna feel like we wanna make sure, right? That our liver is working in optimal condition. So our liver handles over 50,000 chemical functions in the body. Our liver cl cleans and filters the blood. It's in charge of metabolizing fats, sugars, and proteins. It clears toxins from the body. It breaks down drugs and other chemicals. It pr produces enzymes to help digest food and bile to help absorb fats. It produces and regulates cholesterol. It regulates hormones and it balances sugars. So this is important for type two diabetes and hypoglycemia. We wanna make sure that our liver is working with excellence. And if we're struggling with any of those things, a liver cleanse could be very helpful. Interestingly, I used to really struggle with hypoglycemia way, way back before I was diagnosed with autoimmune disease. I was one of those people that if I didn't eat every so many hours, my blood sugar would drop and I felt terrible. And I was kind of like classic case hypoglycemia. When I came upon the protocol of Chinese herbs that ended up putting my autoimmune disease into remission, one of the focus of the herbs was toning the liver. And so after that whole protocol of herbs, after I was completely in remission, from autoimmune, all of a sudden, I my hypoglycemia, my blood sugar didn't bother me at all anymore. I haven't struggled with low blood sugar in over 20 years. So it's amazing when our liver starts to function better, some of these things don't really, um, they can get healed. And with regulating hormones, it's interesting too that our liver is supposed to regulate hormones and filter out hormones that right? Like our body's done with them. Our, our liver is supposed to let go of the estrogen we don't need and some of that stuff. And I also struggle with hormone balance. I didn't realize my hormones were so out of whack. I just thought I was having painful periods. I didn't realize that that was um, an indicator of hormone imbalance. And it took a lot, it's taken a lot of years for me to balance my hormones. I use a lot of essential oils, I use supplements, but when I did a master cleanse, my body flushed out all of that extra hormone junk. And I ended up having a huge shift in how I experience my monthly cycles. Um, again, we're going to talk about master cleanse. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Who should do a liver cleanse, right? So we kind of talked about colon cleanse. How do we know if we should do a liver cleanse? Anyone who has allergies or diabetes or hypoglycemia, anyone who has skin issues, you know, a lot of times we struggle with stuff like eczema, psoriasis, acne, different skin things. Um, your skin, it's your largest outside organ. Your skin is an outward manifestation of what's going on on the inside. 
your skin will tell on you if the inside of your body isn't healthy. Clean up the inside and the outside will clear up. I just did a, a cleansing protocol with a friend of mine a couple of months ago, and her testimony was, oh my gosh, my psoriasis got better. And all we were doing, I'll, I'll share with you later the, the protocol we were doing. It was really helpful for her. Anyone who has a weak immune system, because if you're not metabolizing the proteins needed to make white blood cells... Anyone with a hormone imbalance, again, that was my that was my struggle with, um, and a liver cleanse was helpful. Anyone who has taken high doses of acetaminophen, that's Tylenol, brand name, um, or other OTC prescription meds, because all of that stuff will get stuck in your liver. And if your liver, liver is sluggish, if your liver isn't cleansing the way it should, that stuff will hang out in there indefinitely. This is a direct quote from Deborah Rayburn from the Road to Wellness book. Now, Deborah Rayburn was a master herbalist before she started um, doing other wellness things. And her, she says, when I was consulting, girls and ladies tried various supplements, many specific for the issues they were addressing, and many times they were quite successful. However, nearly every single time a woman went on a liver cleanse prior to taking supplements, those supplements were never needed. Fibroids vanished, periods returned to normal, hot flashes ceased, and life in general went back to normal. There is no reason that a woman at any age needs to suffer when a really good liver cleanse can provide so much relief. This does not mean that a sup be of great value. To the liver, you will not get maximum benefit. So she's talking about supplements to help their hormones. A liver cleanse was always most helpful. And then maybe, you know, if they needed the supplements, then the supplements could be more helpful. But if we're not cleansed properly, if our body isn't metabolizing things properly, taking supplements and putting more things into our body isn't going to be the most helpful. It's also important to talk about parasites. Um, because the cleanse that I'm doing right now, the liver and colon cleanse that I'm doing is in prep to do a parasite cleanse. Because again, we if we're talking about cleansing, we can't start with a parasite cleanse if we haven't already cleansed the, the other pathways, right? I don't want to do a parasite cleanse and end up with parasites stuck in my body, not being able to get out. But what, oh, we, we might think, how, how who needs to do a parasite cleanse? Why would we do a parasite? because parasites can come traveling to another country. and sometimes our, our thinking we're trained to believe and even even western doctors would say oh well if you travel to a foreign country there's no way that you could have a parasite issue but the truth is if we have pets, pets can get parasites and how close are we with our pets right like sometimes my dog sleeps in my bed <laughs> you know we're very close with our pets so we can't transfer those things. Undercooked meat, fish, or unwashed vegetables, even organically raised vegetables, because they use natural fertilizer. Now I do wash my veggies. I have a great fruit and veggie soap, but do I get every single microscopic thing? What if one time I'm lazy and I just do an under the, you know, under the faucet rinse? Could I get something in me that I don't want there? Parasites can potentially be a root cause of any health issue we can think of, including mental health issues. This will blow your mind. Try this. If, if you don't believe me or if you do believe me, try this. Google any health condition and then put and parasites after it. Autoimmune disease and parasites. Digestive issues and parasites mental health and parasites. Now that's not to say every single health issue is caused by parasites, but there's a chance, there's always that chance that it could be a root cause. So if you're struggling something that you haven't found the root cause of, if you feel like you've been to 
doctors and naturopaths and you've tried supplements and you've tried medications and you've tried things and this and that and you're checking all the things off the list and you're going but nobody's figured out what's really wrong i still feel like i'm treating symptoms but it's not actually fixing the thing whatever that thing is there is a chance that it could be a root cause parasites could be a root cause you can always try a parasite cleanse and see if it helps. It definitely wouldn't hurt you clearing things out and you never know if you might end up feeling better because even things at a microscopic level, of course, can wreak havoc on your health. So there are so many different options when it comes to cleansing. There's cleanses that we can do just with food. There's cleanses we can do with supplements, with essential oils, or with a combination. I've done so many different things and combined so many different things. I can talk a little bit about each of these. There's a great first cleanse and Deborah Rayburn calls it in her Road to Wellness book, she calls it my first cleanse. And she kind of describes um, like a very easy way of just taking one week and consuming all vegan foods. No animal products. Legumes and nuts are okay as long as you know you don't react to those. Again, not uh, usually we leave peanuts out. Um, peanuts have a different kind of thing going on with them. They're susceptible to like mold and toxins and stuff. Make sure that your fruits, make sure your veggies are like 50% raw. So, you know, you can cook and steam some things. Make sure you're eating 50% raw foods and drink a lot of water. Like start your day with a glass of lemon water. Do this for one week and see how you feel. Especially if you've never cleansed before and maybe you haven't shifted your, you haven't started to shift your nutrition. Um, cause again, that was, that was a game changer for me. Um, back when I, when I was struggling with autoimmune disease and even when I got into remission, I hadn't shifted from that standard American diet. It was a few more years before I decided to go, well, I think I'm going to cut out gluten and dairy and sugar and start to, you know, I definitely noticed a difference in how I felt when I did that. So if you've never done that, um, and, and this would be like a, you know, kind of a big deal to try this kind of a cleanse, go for it, try it for a few days, try it for a week, see how you feel. It will start to cleanse out your liver and your colon. You're getting all of that fiber. This is a great way to just start out. If you're kind of in that spot of like, I'm going to dip my pinky toe into cleansing because the whole thing just seems a little bit, you know, overwhelming. This is a great place to start. Oh, and also no artificial sweeteners. So even if you are having a little bit of coffee, maybe with some almond milk, because that's still, <laughs> I still stick with my coffee and that's still fine, right? As long as we're not putting dairy in it um, or artificial sweetener stuff. Get, put that on your, you know, list of things to not do. Artificial sweeteners wreak havoc on your gut and your microbiome and your health and your, they're just so toxic. So some cleanses that I've done, like I said, I've done different kinds of cleanses and not necessarily as a protocol. Sometimes I just do cleansing supportive things. Um, I'll tell you what I mean. So Anthony Williams is the author of those medical medium books. And he has a book called Live, like the liver rescue. And he has a detox in the book, a liver detox. Now I'm not speaking in support of Anthony Williams. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of stay neutral to, you know, I know a lot of people really like him and I know a lot of people kind of don't get a good sense of, you know, whatever, because he's not a medical professional. He's not a doctor. He is giving health and wellness advice. So either way, you know, whether you go like, you know, he's not a doctor, so I'm not interested or whatever. I'm, I'm going to stay in the middle. What I can say is that I have done his liver cleanse and it's very much in alignment with Deborah Rayburn's My First Cleanse in that 
it's a lot of raw fruits and veggies, a lot of apples, a lot of cucumbers, a lot of fresh foods that are going to help with fiber, help clear us out, help our liver. This is the guy that's super into celery juice. So the cleanse does have you drinking celery juice a little bit every day for so many days. And I did this cleanse, again, whether he's a doctor or not, whatever our personal sentiment is, it's excellent advice to eat clean, fresh food every day. You can't go wrong with eating salads and apples and vegetables and fruits and eating that every day for nine days. His cleanse is like a nine day thing with some celery juice. You can't go wrong. Um, so when I did this for nine days, I can tell when my body is cleansing. Again, I'm sure you can too. Um, I'll spare you the details, but I can tell when I go to the bathroom that my body is letting go of stuff. And this cleanse did that for me. By about the third or the fourth day, I could tell that my body, my liver really was purging some toxins that it was holding on to. So I really like this. His protocol is in his book. You could grab it from the library or whatever. It is super simple. He shares recipes that you can make. There's like a liver detox salad that has a whole bunch of fruits and veggies on it. There's a smoothie you can make. I've also done cleansing, and again, this isn't really a cleanse or a protocol, but I've supported my liver by using Young Living's Juva Cleanse Essential Oil Blend in capsules. So Young Living oils, you can ingest them, certain ones. And I use this in capsules. I put so many drops in a capsule and I just took it as a supplement so many times a day. I don't even remember for how many days. But this is a very powerful oil. There's only three oils in the blend. It's helichrysum, an oil called lum, and celery seed blend. And I took it in capsules. And again, after so many days going to the bathroom, I could feel that my body was releasing toxins. So, I mean, that's like a super simple way to just, you know, I want to support my liver. I want to do something to cleanse my liver. I could use some liver supporting essential oils. I've also used food grade diatomaceous earth as a cleanse slash supplement. So if you've heard of diatomaceous earth, or we call it DE, a lot of people use it on farms. A lot of people use it. Um, it's like a white powdered substance you can kill bugs with it. What it does is it dries out the exoskeleton of a bug. And so you can use it as a natural bug deterrent, like in gardens and stuff like that. If you get the food grade, you can ingest it either by mixing the powder into a drink or by putting it in capsules. And it can kill parasites. It can bind toxins and help your body you know, let them out. So I have done that as a cleanse. Now the master cleanse, the master cleanse is a whole thing. It was designed by Stanley Burroughs back in, I want to say maybe like the forties or fifties. Stanley Burroughs wrote a book. It's called, oh, I'm drawing a blank on the title. <laughs> um, hang on. It'll come to me. I should have I should have had it for my for my book show and tell. Um, anyway, Stanley Burroughs, but there's other people who have wrote, written other books about the master cleanse that have that are more helpful in the details of how to do the cleanse. It's a very specific protocol, and I will say it's not easy. Um, you need a little wherewithal to be able to get through it, so I don't recommend it as a first cleanse. But what you do is it is like a liquid diet. So no solid foods for the standard is days. Some people even take it longer. They go 20, 30, 40 days. My husband and I did it for 10 days. So you make this concoction with lemon juice, fresh squeezed, grade B maple syrup, pure maple syrup, not the, not the, you know, pancake stuff and cayenne pepper. And you mix that together and you mix it in water like a lemonade drink. And you drink it multiple times a day, eight to 10 cups of this lemonade drink every day for 10 days. And then you also do other like smooth laxative tea. You need to make sure your colon 
Now that concoction does have in it enough glucose and minerals and nutrients to sustain your body. I did not starve. I was not hungry, um, but it cleanses you out. And not only does it cleanse the colon and a cleaver, it's a total tissue cleanse. It will cleanse you at a cellular level so that if you feel like I don't even know what my body needs, but I need to hit the reset button and get things like set back to factory reset. <laughs> that is the master cleanse. Now, like I said, it's not easy to drink a lemonade concoction all day, every day for 10 days and not have any solid food by mouth. I was so afraid of doing the master cleanse. I had heard of it and I didn't think I'd be able to do it for years but my husband was struggling with some health stuff and we were really at a spot where it was like, I've got to do something drastic to help him get his digestion and his lungs and his colon and like get everything back online. So honestly, I did it with him to be able to do it for him. And so we did it together. And so that's when he had that experience of like totally purging the colon, totally cleansing his lungs, his digestive system got a reset. It helped him out a ton. He actually lost a few pounds because um, his body needed to release some stuff and he felt really good. Now my body, because my body needed something different, my body had a totally different experience where I said like I purged whatever hormonal junk had been stuck in my liver so much so that my entire menstrual cycle reset and I wasn't, I'm no longer having the pain and all of that stuff that I was having during the month. So again, the master cleanse can be very powerful, but if you've never done a cleanse before, I probably wouldn't start with it. If you'd like more info on that, I can get you some resources. And there's also a Facebook group that's fabulous for just like info and support and people going like, let's do this together because um, that always helps too. And my new favorite cleanse is called the Jump Start. This is something that I do every month. It's called the 11 Day Jump Start. But the Jump Start isn't just a cleanse. The Jump Start is an anti-inflammatory protocol where we combine a whole bunch of like little healthy practices all into one. And it's a powerhouse for reducing inflammation. I've had a reduction in pain. People have a reduction in anything that your body is struggling with because inflammation is also, you know, exacerbates everything. So if we can reduce inflammation, we can help our health in so many different ways. But I listed it on my cleansing list because the Jumpstart does have cleansing properties. We're taking a supplement that helps cleanse your body. We're drinking a lot of water. We're eating super clean food. So we're stopping, you know, eating toxic stuff. Um, and so a lot of people experience what they call a whoosh during the Jumpstart. Um, where it's like on about day four, you might go to the bathroom a lot because, you know, all of a sudden your body purged all kinds of stuff. So the jump start is actually a really super easy way to dip your foot into cleansing. And again, that's something that I do um, with a group of friends every month. If you're interested, let me know and I can help you get some info on that. This is the colon and liver cleanse that I'm doing right now. It actually is a protocol that was designed by Gary Young from Young Living, and it uses some Young Living supplements. So I began it on the 26th. That was this past Monday. It's going to last for five weeks, and it's going to be followed by a parasite cleanse. And we're cleansing the colon and liver first in prep for the parasite cleanse. And so we're using the supplements Detoxzyme, Comfort Tone, Lemon Essential Oil in capsules. And I'm taking all of these supplements once a day and it's cleansing the colon and liver. And this is wonderful because I'm not having a detox reaction to this. So, because I said I cleanse, I detox really hard. So I wasn't sure what to expect when I start to take these supplements. Was I going to feel a certain way? Was my body going to go into shock from like, purging crazy stuff. I've actually felt really good. I haven't had any detox reactions or, you know, headaches or nausea or any of that, you know, stuff that signals my body that, you know, toxins are coming out. 
I'm sure toxins are coming out, but you know, this is a gentle cleanse. And I think my body has gotten to the point that I'm not shocking it anymore when I do these cleansing um, protocols. Some other supplements and oils that I like to use, have used, these are all from Young Living Company. And you'll notice there's two oils. One is called Juva Flex and the other one is called Juva Cleanse. The supplements are called Juva Tone and Juva Power. So they all start with Juva. So that's Young Living's phrase. That means, you know, if we see Juva, that means it supports the liver. So the two oils, those can be taken either internally or they can use, be used topically. And the, the supplements, Juva Tone is the caplet that you swallow. Juva Power is a powder that you can put on your food. It has kind of a savory flavor. I love it on popcorn. I love putting it on savory foods like, you know, eggs or potatoes or something like that. And it's just like an herbal supplement that supports the liver. There are some other supplements for cleansing that we can use. Digest and cleanse eases occasional digestive discomfort and stimulates digestion. That's a little capsule all full of oils. It just has essential oils in it. And when we take that, it just gently supports the digestive system and helps our body cleanse. The detox zyme is the supplement that I'm taking for the liver cleanse. And it's a digestive enzyme that supports liver detox. And the cleansing trio down there on the bottom. Now, back when we talked about colon cleansing and we said we wanna make sure a comprehensive colon cleanse does all of these different things. This little cleansing trio does that. The comfort tone gently aids colon movement. So if your colon isn't moving, that this, this helps that peristaltic action. It helps the colon move so that it can get the stuff out. The essential zyme is a digestive enzyme, kind of like detox zyme. They both say enzyme at the end, right? The essential zyme is a little bit different and it helps break up debris. So if you have stuck stuff in your colon, like maybe you've had a hard time having bowel movements for a prolonged period of time and there's some stuff stuck in there that's gotten really hard, this helps break that up so that your, you know, the, the walls of your intestinal lining, the walls of your colon can let go of it. And the ICP is the fiber to help scrub the digestive tract. So these three supplements together are an excellent colon cleanse, where if you wanted to start somewhere and you go, I just want to start with something, I'm not sure where to start. A colon cleanse with the colon trio could be a great place to start. Also, you know, we've talked a lot about colon, liver, getting parasites out of our body, but everything, every part of your body, you can cleanse. You can do a candida cleanse. If you struggle with yeast overgrowth, there's a cleanse specific for that. You could do just a heavy metal cleanse if you know that, you know, heavy metals have gotten stuck in your body. Years ago, I met, um, I met a gal who had had a hip replacement and the metal piece that they put in her hip was leaching like cadmium and like toxic chemicals. Like, I don't know, it seems like one of those medical devices that probably has been recalled because of stuff like this, but she ended up with like heavy metal toxicity because of the metal device that was in her body. So a heavy metal cleanse could be really important for, you know, anybody. You can do a specific pancreas or spleen cleanse. You can do a lymph cleanse. All of these different cleansing protocols, and there's other liver cleanses and kidney cleanses in the Inner Transformations book. So if you really want to dig into different kinds of cleanses, that would be a great book for that. And then after we've cleansed everything, we want to keep it clean, right? We want to maintain good health. You know, some people say, some practitioners say, you know, we could cleanse annually, or maybe we might want to do, uh, do a different organ cleanse each quarter or each season. But we want to make sure that we're not retoxifying ourselves 
once we go ahead and cleanse everything out. So just to maintain good health, we want to be mindful of toxins and preservatives and pesticides and foods. You know, I buy organic things when I can. Sometimes I can't, you know, sometimes it's not available at my, at my grocery store. Sometimes it's not in my budget, but I do the best I can um, when I can. We want to be mindful of toxins and cleaning and personal care products. Again, if we're cleansing our body and getting toxins out, it's not going to be as helpful if every day we're putting toxins back in. Every day I'm using cleaners that I'm inhaling that are toxic to me, or I'm putting artificial um, fragrances or parabens or whatever on my skin and my body's absorbing it. And, but I'm still trying to do a cleanse, right? It's like we're emptying out, but then we're pouring toxins back in. Our class next month is going to focus on this so that this, think of this class as a part one, clean, cleaning our body on the inside. Part two is going to be all about cleaning our house. How can we get these toxins out of our home so that we're not continuing to toxify our bodies? So I hope that you'll be able to catch the next, <laughs> the next class. There's going to be a part two. We want to support our microbiome and our gut, right? Especially when we do our colon cleanse or our liver cleanse, keep maintaining our microbiome, our gut, the probiotics in our digestive tract, so much of our immune system, work. so many of the neurotransmitters that are like the feel good chemicals for our brain, that mental health stuff lives there. If you maintain your microbiome, again, that could be a whole other class, but if you support your gut, you're gonna support your mental health, you're gonna support your immune system, and you're going to support your digestion. Release emotions. As much as we can, let's not hang on to the anger or the bitterness or the regret or the resentment. We need to practice letting that go so that it doesn't get stuck in our liver, in our cells. Again, whole other class. How do we let go of those emotions so they don't get stuck? Stay, stay with me, right? Let's keep in touch so that we can have another class for that also. And that, <laughs> that's the conclusion to our class. Let me go ahead and stop our screen share. And so I hope our class has been helpful. I hope that gave you some points to ponder and maybe even just on your own personal health and wellness goal checklist. You know, if some things popped up for you, if you have some additional questions or you want to kind of dip your toe and you want to get started on a cleanse and you're not sure where to go or where to get started, let's stay connected. Go ahead and message me again, whether you're catching this, you know, on a replay or on YouTube, I'm going to put my contact info and my website that you can contact me from down there in that little info section. And I'm happy to link arms with you. I've got groups of people. We do 11 day jumpstart every month. I've got different resources for you. Um, if you need any supplements or essential oils, I've also got discount codes that will be helpful for you. And I would just, it's always on my heart to come alongside people who want to make some healthy changes for their health. So thank you for following along. Thank you for watching. Um, have a wonderful, healthy rest of your day. And I'm just excited to keep in touch. So go ahead and message me.